So before we can analyze a beam in flexure, we need to calculate some of the geometric properties of the cross section of the beam itself. So what we've done is we've thrown up a, a T section on here, uh, and we're going to look at some of the key properties that we need to know, uh, such as the location of the neutral axis, its moment of inertia, and the first moment of area in a couple different spots. So we'll start by locating the neutral axis. Of course, we know that the neutral axis goes through the centroid of the cross section. We, we have a composite uh, cross section, which is fairly common in the construction industry, where we have a cross section built up of a series of common shapes which are connected with you know, welds or glues or their extruded shapes. And this makes it quite easy for us to calculate the location of the centroid and those other geometric properties that we're interested in. So the first thing I need to do is I need to set up a reference plane. Now, it doesn't matter where you set up that reference plane. Common places would be the, the bottom of the cross section, top of the cross section. Uh, for me, I, I normally, if I have no other reason to do it otherwise, uh, will pick up the bottom of the cross section. So I'm just going to extend out my reference plane right here. I know that the centroid is going to be located up in the upper half of the web as a result of the, uh, the flange. And I'll label that in here and we call that dimension Y bar. Now uh, the equation that we're going to use to get Y bar equal to the sum of A at I y at i all over the sum of a at i. So what this is, is a at i represents the area of one of the built up sections and y at i is the distance from our reference plane to the centroid of that uh, built up piece. Of course the bottom of the sum of all of the component areas gives us the total area. I go back to my cross section, what I want to do is I want to identify the, the two common areas, or three common areas, four common areas that we're going to be using. So in this case, I'll set it up with the flange as area one, and I will hatch out area one so that we know exactly what we're talking about. And that leaves the web to be area two. And again, I'll hatch it out so that we can see what we're talking about. And now what I want to do is I want to label on the diagram Y1 and Y2. So from the centroid of area 1, this would be Y1. And from the centroid of area 2, that would give us Y2. Now to figure out what those dimensions are, that's simple inspection of the geometry of the cross section. Uh, so if I look at Y1, I have the total height of 300 millimeters and I go down half the width of the flange. Uh, so half the width of uh, the flange would be 25 millimeters. So I end up with a Y1 of 275 millimeters. Now the, uh, the web itself, so we, we have to figure out the overall height of the web, so that's the height of the cross section less the thickness of the web, so we're down to 250 millimeters and we're halfway uh, up that, so we would have 125 millimeters as our Y2. So with that information, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and fill out our equation. So starting with one and moving on, uh, so we have the area, which would be its width, which is 300 millimeters, times its thickness of 50 millimeters. And we said that Y1 was 275 millimeters. And to that, we add the area of 2. So the area of 2, we said, was 250 millimeters times its thickness of 60 millimeters multiplied by y1 or y2 which is 125 millimeters let me underline that and then underneath we have area total which of course are just the area components of what we just wrote above the line so 300 times 50 plus 250 times 60 millimeters and that allows us to calculate the centroid, which is at 200 
millimeters. And I'm going to go over here and label that as 200. And that's how we calculate the centroid and identify the location of the neutral axis for a composite cross-section. 